started with my day. <laughs> Let's do it. <sighs> What's up guys? My name is Borne Frank and I'm a painter based at Pacific Grove here on the California coast. I thought I'd do another day in the life of an artist. I think it's been about a year since the last one. This one is gonna be kind of just like a breakdown of what I'm working on right now. It's a little snapshot into some of the things that I work on in my studio. Um, I'll be going through my to-do list, talk to you a little bit about some of the side projects that I'm excited about, some of the paintings that I'm working on, and all the little in-between things that I need to accomplish throughout the day. So come join me for this ride and let's get to it. <laughs> So we're currently in my studio in Pacific Grove. This is the place where I spend the most amount of time, I would say. I'm very fortunate to have a large space um, with a lot of surfaces that I can put stuff on and a lot of storage space. I'm a very messy person and I spread, I spread my goods. Uh, so if there's a counter, I will definitely cover that counter if I can. But yeah, this is where I have all my art supplies, all my panels, my brushes, my paints, and everything in between. So uh, very fortunate to have this space and get some, get some artwork done. <laughs> also, I absolutely love Micron pens, so I even have a little container with all my pens. <laughs> Yesterday I added the second layer on this little panel and it looked pretty rugged. It kind of looked like this yesterday um, in terms of like the amount of detail and brushwork and style. And then the second coat just kind of refined the lines and enhanced certain areas. But what I'm really focusing on is, I can't even get it in the light, is texture. Like I'm really trying to capture the texture on the canvas and not be afraid to put so much paint on it. And then what I wanna do is I wanna do a wash over it to really emphasize those lines, like a dark wash. That's kind of the plan, but with this one today. So here I'm adding the blue onto the upper section of the painting and then what I'm going to do next is add in the lower area which is going to have more of this orange glow. And getting the right color always takes me a second. I don't always get it on the first try. I'll test it out and see if it works and if it is then I'll go ahead. And what I'm doing here is just kind of cutting into some of those edges on the hillside to shape it uh, more to my liking. And um, once I get the lower color set in place, then I can start blending it with some of the other colors and getting some of those mid-tones. And sometimes I mix colors on my palette and sometimes I choose to mix them on my canvas. It kind of just depends on my mood and depends on if I choose the right color on the first try or not. So as a side note, I think I used every inch of this disposable paper palette. Look at that yummy texture. Oh, so much texture today. Texture for you, texture for me. So I just got finished with my first painting session. Uh, I spent about an hour and a half, I would say, working on this guy. It's a small little Big Sur scene. Working small is great just to get back into the groove and get some momentum going. There's a lot less pressure when it comes to breaking for smaller works, at least for me personally. 
and um, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, with the little guy, what I'm doing is I'm really focusing on trying new things, really exploring new ways of painting or approaching um, how I build up layers and how I build up a, a, a painting. That way I can implement a lot of those learnings on smaller canvases onto my larger pieces. Uh, it's a good way to keep practicing, keep pushing myself into trying new things and yeah, look at that little screensaver. <laughs> I don't know. So these were the brushes that I used for this painting session. I only used five, if I, six, if I can count correctly. <laughs> oh. um, what I've gotten better at is cleaning my brushes after using them. Sometimes I let them sit a little bit too long. And especially when you're using liquid medium, it dries almost like concrete. So you have to be sure to clean them thoroughly. So this is my turpentine container. It's a little, green hue from the greens that I've been using for my poppy and landscape of Big Sur. What I'm gonna do now is just take off the excess paint and I'm totally Michael Jackson here right now with my one glove. Take the excess off, cool. So this container is primarily holding Gamsol, which is odorless mineral spirits, which are great in a studio space that is small. Um, that way you're not inhaling tons of like heavy duty fumes that smell super bad. I do recommend keeping a window slightly cracked or open while working just because some of those fumes can be a little toxic and I think gradually over time, it's not really good for your lungs. Um, and then here I'm just like wiping it and seeing if there's still paint on it and I see a little bit. When cleaning your brushes, I recommend starting off with the cleanest brush first, like with this one, for instance, um, it doesn't have too much paint on it, so it'll just come off really easily. It won't make the turpen, uh, turpentine solution super gross, so that way it'll be easier to clean your brushes. And then, for instance, I'm saving the dirtiest ones for last. Another lesson I learned uh, just from painting over the years and just wanting to work in an environment that's like friendly um, I don't really love the smell of turpentine and the fact that it's toxic is also another reason to not have to smell it. Right now I'm rinsing it on this paper towel that's tiny. Um, if I just let it sit out, it will have some of that turpentine still uh, left in the paper towel and it will stink up my studio. So what I do is I clean my brushes like so and then um, I'll actually take this paper towel that I just used to dry off my brushes and I'm gonna put this in a trash can that has a lid on it so I don't have to smell it and cover up the solution. So I actually have two trash cans in my studio. This one here is for paper scraps and just random stuff that needs to get tossed away. And then this one has all my paint stuff and things that are toxic or that have odors. So that way I can just close it up and keep my studio smelling like roses. I did add a reddish, orange, brown, auburn, I don't know, whatever color, chestnut, <laughs> um, wash to these canvases. And this is a great way to warm up a piece. This just kind of automatically allows some of the color to seep through the paint and give it more of an orange, reddish glow. For this next part, I may have forgotten to videotape it, but I'm using Gamvar Gloss to varnish these paintings. Um, these are a few pieces that have been sitting in my studio for about a week or so and were dry. And I had to varnish them twice actually. This was the second time because the first time I messed up. But um, here they are and I actually quite like them a lot. So the next thing on my to-do list was to frame uh, this painting that I recently sold through my 6x6 auction page on Instagram. I have these maple wood floater frames that I think look really good with the pieces that I'm working with. So I decided to connect them together and um, since I didn't think it was really necessary to put hanging strings, I just decided to attach this hanger. And um, because the nails are so small, I had to use little pliers to hold the nails while I hammered them down. Um, I used to hold them with my fingers, but it was definitely a gamble. But um, overall, I'd say having this set up with uh, a floater frame 
it just kind of finishes the piece. It makes it all come together and adds the finishing touch. It's time to go to the gym and I'm feeling a little tired. <laughs> I always feel tired, but I'm feeling especially tired today. So I'm gonna take my crack, two scoops of amino energy. There's one, two, and this is grape flavored. It tastes like a Jolly Rancher grape flavor. Um, that's the best way that I can describe it. <laughs> and I'm gonna add two ice cubes and some water to it. Hey bartender, can I have the use? Yeah, I got you. Having the gym be a step outside of the studio has been so helpful for me for my practice. I feel like I have a lot more energy as a result. I feel a lot better about myself and I can eat almost everything I want and not have to feel too guilty about it. I know that's something I have to work through, but anyway. Um, and it just boosts my confidence, makes me feel happy. I get my endorphins going and also I get to like practice training and seeing changes in my body and it makes me feel really good so having gyms reopen again even if it's with a mask uh has been extremely helpful and allowing me to feel more like myself and also allow me to continue making work because i'm not depressed <laughs> so i'm probably not going to be probably not going to be filming in the gym because i'm too bashful and i I think I'd be too embarrassed to be like doing shots of me doing reps and whatnot. But today is back and abs, so let's get to it. Wish me luck. I am well aware that this is an art blog, but something really funny happened where I may or may not be kind of a celebrity. Into the pandemic and exercise lovers can now step inside their gyms. Monterey Sports Center is among those back in business. So what's it like inside? The Sports Center has worked since their closure last year, fine tuning in the last few weeks, the reopening plan. In the red tier, the center can have Look, only Mom, 148 on TV. members at one time. It's first come, oh, first serve for those itching to get back to their workouts. When group classes oh, start and again, March 29th, that's me. outside on their sun deck, members will need a reservation. Something to think about, summer's almost around the corner. Aaron, back to those workouts for sure. Nailed it. And to finish it off, a little post-workout meal of some poke. Don't mind if I do. So I actually opened the first box <laughs> off camera. Um, I'll just go through what it was inside the box. I ordered a bunch of these uh, painter's palette pads that I really love. This one is called the gray pad. They're fairly large and it has a little hole for your finger so I can hold it and then paint like this as if I'm uh, standing, for instance, and don't my palette set on a table or something. This is really convenient. I usually just saran wrap them when I'm done with my painting session and when I come back the next day, the paint is still fresh. Um, usually paint will last on my palette for up to three, four days and then it starts to get a little bit dry. Next, I ordered a bunch of paints. Um, and these are colors that some of them I've used before and some of them are new and colors that I thought were kind of interesting and I wanted to play around and experiment with. Um, I bought some transparent red iron oxide. Transparent colors are great for luminosity and for applying glazes. So I bought one of these and also Indian yellow. This one is also slightly transparent and great for adding highlights and really brightening up things, especially if I'm doing like a sunset or something. A new fan favorite, the King's Blue. This is a color that I've been using quite a bit in my paintings, especially for those skies. King's Blue has this very like, almost like French Renaissance painting like quality. Um, and so I've been using a lot more in my skies. Um, Italian Burnt Sienna is a color that I haven't used before, but it's like this reddish kind of brown uh, terracotta like color that I thought was kind of cool. Italian Terra Verde, this one is a new color I've never used. Um, it's supposed to be inspired by the Italian countryside, so like Tuscany or something. This is a color I'm excited to use. And then this one, I don't know why, it was just like a cool kind of like peachy color. It's called Montserrat, Montserrat Orange. 
Um, and it's supposed to be, yeah, like a orange, peachy, warm, uh, yummy color. So those are some of the stuff that I ordered from Dick Blick. It's Christmas. <laughs> Rosemary & Co. brushes. Um, I actually ordered a set from Rosemary & Co. Uh, about a year ago, I would say. Um, and I was very impressed. Uh, I had never really worked with like quality brushes. I've always just kind of gone the discount ones. And uh, when I bought these, I was like, wow, the quality really is there. Um, these were on the expensive side, I would say for brushes, but I kind of just curated the ones that I really like. The square brushes, when they're placed one way, you can cover a lot of ground, and when you twist it, it goes thin, and you can make these really nice sharp edges. I'm a sucker for detail, so I have a bunch of detail brushes over here. Going old school to what I started painting with, uh, a lot of these like rounds that are great for detail too. So, spent way too much money, but we're gonna earn that money back by selling some paintings. And then last but not least, look at these cute little guys. Cute little six inch rounds. Um, I actually ordered a bunch in different sizes just cause I was curious. Actually, this is the eight inch. This is the six inch. Look how teeny tiny that is for, for size differences. So cute. So overall, very successful. Uh, so these, these three pieces will be uh, featured at 19 Karen Gallery in Australia. It's a gallery that's been representing my work since 2016. Um, they've, been, <laughs> they've been showcasing my off the grid collection of portraits with landscapes and uh, they've sold about half the work that I've sent over. So I've been really happy with that. Um, the gallery director, Terry, is an absolute sweetheart. She's a gem of a person and She's just so passionate about art and really highlighting new up and coming emerging artists and also established artists. And her gallery is located on the Gold Coast in Mermaid Beach. Um, we have a great relationship. I'm really happy with uh, our business relationship. And uh, as a person, I have only the deepest respect for her. So to be able to feature work in her gallery means a lot to me and I'm really excited to send it her way but I do need to get the measurements and figure out shipping costs and all that. So I'm just gonna weigh them out um, and figure out how much it's gonna weigh with this being wrapped and put into a box. So that way I can get quotes online and try and find the cheapest way to mail up my work to the Australia. I did find out a quote and I have two options. So I think I'm gonna go with the cheaper one because why not? Um, and now I realize that I haven't showered yet, so I'm stinky. So I'm gonna take a quick shower and then get back to work. Also look at the sisal burners growing outside my window. They're all the way up to the oak tree. It's insane. So I may or may not have taken my sweet, sweet time after dinner. Uh, so I didn't start painting until 9.30 and I thought it'd be time to start tackling those California poppies because they are popping. Um, wow, that's so cheesy. But um, anyway, here I'm kind of just adding some more highlights to it. I'm adding a little bit more of that yellow, transparent yellow that I spoke to you about earlier. Uh, this kind of just, doesn't cover completely all the lines that I did before, but it does add a little bit more vibrance to it. 
I'm really just trying to capture that intensity of color and really trying to make them look like they're glowing almost. I know it's not maybe true to the photo per se, but it definitely makes it have a little bit more personality and gives it that feeling of just ethereal etherealness. Wow, I can't even speak. But anyway, uh, I'm doing this voiceover at like one forty in the morning right now. Anyway, so I'm I'm adding uh, a lot of those like edges to them. I'm kind of just retouching them. I'm also going in with some green and cutting them into the area so i'm enhancing them and just making them look like they're sticking out a little bit more from the grass i don't want it to feel flat i really want to have this 3d effect i'm also adding some of those highlights on the grass by mixing some avocado green some king's blue and white together to make this minty color for the highlight and then i'm also splattering paint onto the canvas with my index finger and this diffuses a lot of those strong edges that I made previously with some of my brushwork. And then I just kind of go back and forth and continue passing over some of those areas. Just past midnight, so I've been painting since 9 p.m., 9.30ish. So I had a little bit of a late start because I took a break after dinner and it took me a second to get back into the gear of like, it's time to work. Um, but I'm really happy with this painting session. I feel like I got a lot more progress done with the texture and um, the colors as well, just to give it that feeling of like wind wrestling through the hillside. So, um, yeah, uh, let's go through that to-do list and see how I did. <laughs> I didn't get to everything, but I almost did. So I'm, I'm really proud of myself, which is cool. To-do list. Uh, add another layer to the Bigser piece, check. Add second layer to the five by seven inch panel, also check. Frame six by six inch seascape for the six by six auction, check. Uh, unbox art materials. Nailed it. Organized studio. <laughs> I did not organize my studio. I usually would do it in the morning, like the first thing I do, just to like get into the, the mindset of like work. But I chose to defer and do other things. Um, and so I can always pick that up some other time. It's just like working in a clean environment is helpful, but it's not super necessary. Um, I might just wait till I'm like done with this painting to like start thinking about cleaning. <laughs> um, measurements on off-grid paintings for 19 Karen Gallery. I measured it, I weighed it, I have a quote, and now I just have to figure out timelines for sending it. Uh, order prints, I ordered some. Uh, package prints and stickers. I did not package and print the stickers that were coming in from my online shop. Um, I sell prints as well as like paintings um, through my Squarespace account. And so I had about six or seven orders that I needed to fulfill that had been adding up from the last week and I will have to do it tomorrow. <laughs> oh well. Um, gym break. I did go to the gym. I did it. Uh, varnish paintings, I varnished them. Uh, prep panels, that's what that wash was that I did earlier, that like reddish color. Um, update online store. I did not update my online store. Um, I guess I updated sli slightly, I like restocked some prints, so I like added that, but then there's some pieces that I wanted to add and I wanted to like edit my bio and maybe add a blog post, but um, I didn't get around to doing that. So wishful thinking. Um, overall, a very successful day, I would say. Um, I was definitely in like work mode today. Sometimes I do nothing at all, and that's a day in life of an artist. Uh, but today was really focused on just getting through as many projects as possible and also having fun at the same time, not feeling like this has to be work or something that I dread or, you know, try to try to avoid. It's like all things that I, I'm really excited about, I'm really passionate about, and I feel extremely fortunate to be an artist um, and to be able to share the work that I'm doing. So 
Thank you so much for watching this video. <laughs> Thank you for watching if you stayed all the way through because it's it's very long. I definitely um, edited a lot and cut out a ton of footage, but I definitely didn't want to cut out too much. I really wanted you to see more of like the labor intensive things and some of the back end kind of things like organizing and unboxing and just like framing pieces or uh, adding second layers and whatnot. So Rome wasn't built in a day and neither was this career. So I'm slowly growing toward, you know, making this more and more um, a part of my daily routine and more and more a part of my life. I guess I will see you all in the next one. Bye.